I, I started my real estate business, um, all that time I had been very active in my children's schools, in, in different arts organizations that I had served on boards. So I had this slew really of people that I thought, oh, here I am, you know, I'm gonna come and I'm now I'm a realtor and I've given all this time, effort and energy and, and they're, you know, it's gonna be easy for me to convey to them and people are gonna come to me. And, and I learned very quickly that was not the case. What's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Become a Local Leader. My name is Grant Finley Shearis. And on today's episode, we have Mary Wilkins, a local real estate expert now in Chicago, Illinois, in the neighborhood of Naperville, and one of the authors in the new real estate business book, Becoming a Local Leader. Um, this book features 21 hyper-local agents and through their story, they share their strategies on how to build one's business through relationships and referrals in a specific geographic area. And I know Mary's story is going to relate to a lot of people because she knows what it's like, um, and even right now, to be moving to an area, to relocating, to not knowing anyone, to needing to build a brand, build a database, build a sphere of influence, um, and get clients through relationships and referrals. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So thank you, Mary, for being on today's show. Yes. Hi, Grant. Thank you for having me. So um, a bunch of us uh, got together to write this book um, to convey a, a very many different message than what a lot of agents hear. It's not about advertising or lead gen or building some really crazy big business. It's about um, getting involved in the community, giving back to the people who live and work there, being a leader and building a business through relationships and referrals. Um, so when you chose to be a part of the book and when you look at your chapter, you had a main message that you wanted to give agents out there, maybe agents who are brand new to the business or are trying to figure it out. What is that main message you want to share? I think um, it's two parts. Uh, the first one being that it's really easy in today's world to look outside of yourself and try to copy what other people are, other people are trying to do. It's, you know, I think that you get, get very easily caught up in that uh, and, and be looking for outside of yourself. I, do I want to be like this person or that person? And if I had to impart, like the number one thing I would impart is trust yourself. And the best thing you can do is be genuinely you, whatever that is. Trust yourself and come at uh, this business as yourself and genuinely yourself. And the second thing that I would say, and it's something that um, in retrospect, I didn't do quick enough. And I would uh, really recommend anybody going into real estate do this as soon as possible, is research and find a mentor. Mentorship is so important. Find somebody that you really want to, uh, that it really resonates with you and, uh, and use them as a mentor. And, you know, really get them to give you feedback and uh, help you grow. And I think that those are the two things that I would say um, are the most basically important things that I'd like to impart to people looking to get into the real estate. I love that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a little bit deeper into that because I remember that's one of the things that uh, in, in hindsight, like as I continue on in my career and business, like trusting myself. Mm -hmm. is something I just I'm reminded of over and over and over again, where it's almost like, a, how does one do it sooner? I wonder, like, moving forward, I can do it a whole lot easier because I've now experienced not trusting myself and mm -hmm. seeing the negative downside of not trusting myself. Absolutely. So if you were to try to like teach someone, how can they trust themselves? How can they be genuinely you, genuinely the uh, them faster? what kind of advice would you give? I think that I would, uh, I have a wonderful mentor right now. So uh, one of the things that we talked about is your why. And I think if you want to learn to trust yourself and whatever you're doing is to sit down in a quiet place with a journal and really write out your why as detailed as possible. Why are you doing this? What's in this? that is driving you, what is motivating you and really, you know, bring it down to the most essential thing of why. And then every single day, you know, if it's every morning as part of your ritual, I have a morning ritual where I do a little motivational thing. And I, I do really do recommend that for everybody, but make that part of your, 
ritual to say, this is my why. And I think if you can really bring that to mind, then it'll be easier for you to stay in yourself and not be looking to, oh, well, this person, oh my God, look at what they're doing, you know, and really pull yourself out of that. This is my why. And then really build confidence in that. You know, your why is no, nobody else's. So as long as you stay really grounded with your why, I think that you can genuinely come at whatever you're doing as yourself. Well, this is a good, good moment then. Um, why don't you tell everyone your why? So, so <laughs> why did you get into real estate? Why do you love it? Um, kind of tell everyone a little bit about you and, and your career up to this point. Sure. Uh, so I, you know, I didn't start out being a real estate agent. I came into it later in life. Uh, I graduated from University of Texas and studied uh, languages and went into marketing, PR, corporate, uh, nonprofit, and then events as well. Um, and then I got married, had children, and was a stay-at-home mom for quite a while. So my story is not unlike many others. Um, and then uh, as my marriage ended, and had to look into going back into working, I had to sit down really and do some hard thinking. Um, but I did come from a marketing uh, background. So that piece of it, I think it was, uh, I knew that I was going to use that in some way or fashion, some form or fashion. Um, and then the other thing is I grew up in architecture. My father's an architect. I grew up around home building. Uh, I remodeled I bought several homes and remodeled many homes. And so that is something that I enjoyed through my entire life. And it was sort of just a putting those two things together. And so my why was I want to um, use my skill set, my, you know, my skill set that I already know that I have a lot of experience in and I'm strong. And then also I know that I love the process of home, you know, I, what that means to have a home, to be in a home and, and to help other people uh, through that process. And so that is genuinely my why, um, when it comes right down to it, it's really uh, learning what somebody else's view of home is and helping pair that person with that ideal. Very cool. Now, you, now you also talked about uh, your morning ritual um, has there been an evolution of that? How'd you, how'd you get it? How'd you put it together? Um, definitely. And why, and why do you think it is the way it is? <laughs> it's, it's definitely an evolution and it's constantly evolving. Uh, but one of the things that I started to do it, uh, after I had children is really get into yoga. So as part of the yoga practice, there's always the meditation that comes along with it. Mm -hmm. And as time has gone by, um, I haven't been as steady with my yoga practice, which I'd like to get back into, but I've certainly kept the meditation piece of it. And I have found that in order to really get grounded, it really is it's wonderful in the morning to just spend a few quiet moments and have 15, 20 minutes of what I call that deep meditation. And it's really just grounding myself, breathing and grounding. And then, you know, if sometimes I have only 10 minutes, but I still take that time to just clear my mind and focus on my breath and just ground. And then from there, I do my little, I either read a motivational thing or I might watch, if I have more time, I might watch a little podcast that has a motivational thing to it that kind of just revs me up and gets me going. Uh, and after that, then I will definitely get you know, before I start planning my day, before I look at social media, before any of that, I remind myself of my why. Why am I doing this? You know, what is it that is motivating me to continue to be a realtor? And it's that thing, finding the person that, uh, that you know, once that I connect with and that I really help them find their ideal. Home. And from there, I, I go on. Are there any other parts to that morning routine? And do you do this like as soon as you wake up? You know, because everyone hears different messages and, and I'm of the belief that, you know, it really is a, a personal thing. Like some people Absolutely. say, like your morning routine is going to start before you even brush your teeth and, and go to the bathroom. Like you got to do it basically in bed as soon as you open your eyes. Some people are like, well, no, let's get that stuff out of the way and like give myself the, give myself a time and space environment to do it. Um, so describe, describe the whole I thing. I ideally like to do it as soon as I wake up. Uh, that's the ideal. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like to get, you know, sit up 
and take those moments to just breathe and do that whole thing. Now, I'm a parent. I'm a partner. Uh, life gets in the way. Uh, yeah. You know, people have different ideas of what they need in the morning. Uh, yeah. and sometimes they're very respectful of that time. Other times not as much. So <laughs> I, I do try to be, be flexible about it. Uh, honestly, you know, if somebody needs something, somebody's gone on a trip, you know, a million different things can come up in the morning. Uh, somebody's calling you and, you know, a client's calling you and they yeah. need you first thing in the morning. Obviously, you're going to address that. But I do, and that's the part of where it's evolving more. I'm getting a little bit more and more selfish about that and about letting people know um, that this is just my time. It's such a little slice of time, you know, and I'm just going to take it to center myself, to center myself and start the day off right with the right frame of mind. And then I can tackle things in a much better way. Um, I so, think it's very, I think it's very true. Like before you can put the oxygen mask on for your, for others, you got to put yeah. it on yourself at first. And that right. time I have found a lot of happiness and success in giving myself that me time first thing. Right. That, that's the whole other topic. We could talk about that probably for hours. And there are people uh, that like to get up in the morning and exercise right away. And I think that's yeah. great. You know, I, I, you know, I also like to fit exercise into my day. Uh, but, but for me, be having that quiet grounding time and setting my sort of like resetting my, I call it resetting my head uh, is, is the first and key step. And, and if you want to be a leader for your community, a leader for your clients, you need to be in state and yeah. stuff like this really is important for anyone listening. Yeah. Now, the other thing you mentioned I want to get into is the mentorship. Um, so let's talk about first, um, the benefits that you've got from a mentor, and then we'll kind of get into how to find good mentors and how to leverage um, them versus waiting for them to help you, how to, how to get help from them, how to pick them. But first, what have been the benefits you've received from having great mentors? I think um, one of the things that we all know is that so many people get into real estate. It looks like it's such an easy thing to do, right? Any, anybody can get to a house. Uh, and there's so, this is, you know, supported by how many people end up with a license yearly. But I, I don't have the exact number, numbers, but very few of them end up with real estate as a career. Because for, anyone I, I I know, for anyone listening, I know the numbers. Uh, yeah. 50, 50%. <laughs> so last year, 400,000 new agents joined. Um, 200,000 out the door within their first year mm -hmm. and 95% of them will be out the door in five years. Mm -hmm. That is, so it is, it is a big failure rate. Yes. And so therefore you need to learn how to do it. And that's where mentors are for. So keep going. Yeah, exactly. So the attrition rate is very, very high. <laughs> so mentor mentorship is for me has been that person that snaps you into the reality because it is a sales job and you bring a skill set. And so you have to be very clear on what that skill set is that you're offering and you need to be able to relay it to somebody else um, and be very assured of it. And so that's where mentorship helps as well as the reality of the numbers. Uh, you know, it is a business, you're trying to build a business. And so you have to really have goals and they need to be clear set goals. And I think um, having a mentor is very, uh, more, it's really good for that. They really can help you outline your, your plan. And also somebody that can really not only be your cheerleader, because you want somebody that's going to approach you in a positive way. At least I do. I, you know, people respond to different things. Maybe there are some people that respond to somebody being a taskmaster, but I respond more to a cheerleader as a mentor. So that is maybe an individual thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I was looking for somebody who was going to be a cheerleader, but that was also going to remind me, look, these, these, you know, this was your goal and you're four days away. Are you going to beat it? You know, what are you going to do? And, and then how to keep you just sort of on that path so that you can look at, you know, this is a career long term. And it does really take that. It takes looking at your month, looking, are you meeting your goals? What can you do to reset if you aren't meeting those goals? And having that somebody that's there to positively, in my, in my case, positively reinforce 
um, the steps that you need to keep taking. Who is that? So um, now also is, is just to clarify, because I know there's different words in the industry, coach first mentor. How do you see those as different or do you see them as the well, same? Well, okay. So you're, they, they can be one person. Okay. It certainly can be one person that's your coach and your mentor, or you can have two separate people. Obviously you can have somebody that is very successful and that you follow um, and that is willing to uh, communicate with you and impart with you some sort of knowledge in the business or, mm -hmm. you know, in, in some ways be a positive cheerleader and, you know, celebrate your victories and have a separate person that's sort of like the, the task, you know, yep. or that can be the same person. Um, now I will say that has been a very hard thing to find. It, it is not easy that I don't think, or it hasn't been for me to find a mentor. Um, it's, it's easy. It's easier to find a coach definitely. And especially if you're, if you're going to put, if you're going to pay to have a coach yeah. and, and I do actually, we can, can talk about that. I, if you are able to, I do recommend that you hire a coach. Um, but, uh, it can be the same person. And um, it, it has been not the easiest thing to find a mentor for me. Um, I did a lot of research uh, in, in, uh, in the past in Houston, for instance. And at that time, I really wanted a female mentor. And it was just sort of a personal choice. I think everybody has, you know, whatever it is. I was wanting to see a woman who, who was a mother, you know, was somebody that reflected me, that was totally. successful in the field. Um, and, um, and real estate can be very competitive. So there wasn't a whole uh, slew of people that were willing to step up to be that person. What I found now, and I have found a very good mentor um, that, that was part of the business, uh, but I found them in my company and I uh, reached out to several people. They didn't actually, they weren't a person that lived where I lived, but I did reach out to several people and I had an email that I sent out. That well, just yeah, said, what was that email? What was the pitch? It, it is, you know, I am here, I'm a woman like you and I want to learn, I, I admire what you've done and I'd love it if you'd spend any time teaching me, um, you know, what, what uh, I'm, I'm at a loss for the word. I wish I should have actually pulled up the email so I could read it to you. Uh, but just basically, of course, saying, because I do admire the people that I reached out to, you know, I admire what you've done. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would love it if you would be able to impart to me some of the knowledge so that I can also um, grow in this business and do the same for others. And, um, and many people don't respond. And that's okay, because that's, I, I actually don't take that as a negative anymore. I think that's the other thing. Um, then you know, that's not, you don't, that's not going to ever be a match, right? So, and then you have the people that do respond. And I think you really need to take, not take the first person that responds, but really kind of do that conversation of back and mm -hmm. forth to find that fit, you know, to find the person that is going to be willing to communicate and, and that, you know, gets you as much as you get them. Um, and then I hope that, you know, and one of the things that I write about in my chapter in the book, and that's really the next step that I'm wanting to take on my personal growth is I want to be that for other people. I want to be available and open myself up to be a mentor for the next person that's saying, you know, this is a career that I want to pursue. And, you know, what are your experiences? What has worked? What hasn't worked? Mm -hmm. And, and to be that cheerleader for somebody else, because honestly, there's plenty of room. Um, there's plenty of room in this business for other people. And I think that um, there's a lot that you gain from being a mentor as much as even maybe Absolutely. even more than being mentored. Now, one of the things um, a mentor would also do um, apart from cheerleading, which some people need or want and is has benefit of is also uh saying the reality of things, even if they don't like hearing it. And one of the things in your chapter, which I really want you to explain more of, was you said, one of the most surprising things that I learned in real estate, the hard way, so I want to learn about this story, this hard way, was in thinking that I had the support of those closest to me, when in reality, I did not. Correct. And I think that a big reason why people don't do well in real estate is because they think 
that they're going to have all this support and all this business from all these people that are in their Facebook and phone and LinkedIn and they'll get all this help and then it doesn't happen. Right. They didn't necessarily have a plan B or, or a plan to not need. It's great to have the support of people close to you, but, but have a plan of if you, just in case they don't. Right. Um, so, so please explain what you meant by that statement. Maybe you got a story to share. Um, I do. You I do. do. Yeah. Because, you know, as I, as I started my real estate business, um, all that time I had been very active in my children's schools in, in different arts organizations that I had served on boards. So I had this slew really of people that I thought, oh, here I am, you know, I'm going to come and I'm now I'm a realtor and I've given all this time, effort and energy and, and they're, you know, it's going to be easy for me to convey to them and people are going to come to me. And, and I learned very quickly that was not the case. Um, Everybody knows a realtor, number one. I, I, I you know, I really uh, like to know the person that doesn't know a realtor. Uh, it would be interesting to run into somebody that yeah. doesn't know any realtors. Uh, Almost but, weird if you don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you if you don't know a realtor? Uh, everybody knows a realtor. Um, then uh, there's this, that people uh, might see you in one certain way for whatever reason, and it takes a lot for, to change that, that, you know, they see you as this person that is a volunteer or does school things or whatever. Uh, it takes some time to change that, you know, that perception that people might have of you. Um, so I ran into that as well. But the other thing that was really maybe even more, a little bit more difficult for me was finding that even close, what I thought were closer friends or even family members, not close family members, but, you know, people that were family friends or in, you know, distant family members um, would not use you uh, because mm -hmm. it is a very touchy thing for a lot of people and they don't want to necessarily have somebody that close to them. They want it to be a business transaction. And so um, there's that aspect of it. Then there are the people that also don't really want you to know there as a realtor, you do get a lot of insight into people's financial um, life yeah. for lack of a better word. And there are a lot of people that don't really want, you know, somebody that is, part of their family circle or friend circle to necessarily have that knowledge. And they prefer to deal with somebody that's for much further away. That's just a business transaction. And so that was very, that was a very, uh, a very eye opening experience for me. Yeah. I, I talk about it a lot as um, you know, I, I, that my, my famous story is my dad's like best friend uh, as a realtor um, mm -hmm. and they play tennis every week. And uh, as soon as I got into this business, I noticed the same trend that you're talking about. I noticed this idea that people have a personal relationship with people mm -hmm. and or they have a professional relationship with people. Correct. And just because you have a personal relationship doesn't mean you'll get a professional relationship. And just because you have a professional relationship with, let's say, your person that you refer business to, like your mortgage broker, doesn't mean you're going to have the personal relationship with them where they now want to actually do business with you. Right. For themselves, for their personal self versus just professional self. Right. And, 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 and the goal of a, of a realtor is to develop both. You mm -hmm. want both sides to it. Because if you just have one, you might lose to someone else who has both. And, um, and so I, you know, my dad's friend, I said, hey, uh, dad, who are you going to use for your realtor when you sell your home? He says, I don't know. I'm like, really? You have no idea. And mm -hmm. I was like, and you play tennis with this guy every week. He's like, no, I have no idea. And in my head, I'm just thinking this. And then I go to him next time we play tennis together. And I'm like, hey, you know what my dad said when I asked him this question, who's going to use? He's like, what? He didn't know. He's like, what? And I'm like, have you ever had a conversation about real estate or finance or anything? He's like, well, no, we just play tennis every week. And I'm like, exactly. you need to do the other conversation. Exactly. And, and, and you need to, as you said, change people's perspectives, add a layer to the relationship, add information. So when so what did you do to change people's perspectives because there's people who are getting into real estate and they're like people know me as this and now i gotta be this or i'm reinventing myself or i'm a new person i gotta change people's perspective just to think that i'm just as competent as someone who's been in the industry for 10 years even though i've only been here for one or two years 
So what would be some of your advice or tactics or strategies to how do you change people's perspective to then go from being a friend to also a client or being someone with a professional relationship to now being close enough to actually want to do business too? And that's the tricky part, but the light bulb finally did come on. <laughs> and I, I recognize that, um, well, two, th this one was twofold as well, because people already have the perception that, you know, realistic, realist, realtors can have a very bad connotation, right? People yeah. feel like realtors are in your face and, you know, are always, you know, trying to get you to buy or sell something, you know, and so it's sort of a little bit of a, a tightrope walk uh, where uh, you do want to start to talk about yourself and, and your business uh, uh, with your circle of friends or, you know, with your sphere of influence. Um, some of that I found easier in the beginning to do through social media, just start to talk about, uh, you know, in, in the mix, uh, you don't want to bombard people because I think that that's where you, you lose them. But in the mix, so I'll just start to talk about, uh, well, this is knowledge that I can impart. And, and these are ways that I'm, you know, I took different courses to improve my knowledge in different ways and to sort of feature those things and to also just um, give that information out freely to people so that they start to see you as a person that has that knowledge. And then also in conversations, because everybody talks about their work. Honestly, I wonder if your father hadn't heard about this other person's work. I would be surprised if he hadn't. So that was the part that was hard for me. But when the light bulb came on, I've become much better at it, which is now I do talk about those things in conversations. I don't lead with them. I don't bombard people with it. And I'm not a hard salesperson anyway. It's not my personality anyway. But I do have those be part of my regular normal day conversations. And the more I did that, the more naturally it came. You know, the more that I was able to say, well, this is what I'm working on, or I learned this fact today, or I'm helping this person in this neighborhood, or you should see this house that I showed today. And just in those ways, then it became a more natural thing. And that's the way that people start to see you. Ah, okay, well, that's her business, just like they talk about theirs. Mm -hmm. And that slowly changes people's perception. Now, will they use you? Maybe, maybe not. But at least they see you in that way. They might refer somebody else to you. I had a friend that didn't use me, but referred somebody else to me. And uh, for me, that's a win. Yep, absolutely. And yeah. and. Everyone listening, I was, I was excited that there's no magic bullet. It really is repetition. It's yeah. hard work. It's sharing information of value about what you're doing in your profession and then following up in conversations to ask if people have questions, ask if they need anything in terms of what you do for a living. Um, I know... Uh, that's what it took for, for me to change me to going from health and fitness to real estate and tech. It was just, well, I'm going to keep publishing and doing this stuff over and over and over again. And you guys are going to keep seeing it. And now all of a sudden grants the real estate guy versus the fitness or event guy, which I was in previous. And it, take, sure. it takes time, more time for some, as you said, less time for others. Um, but all you can do is do it and take well the consistency is a very key word i think yeah. that and, and and it's constant struggle i find that too and as a realtor i think maybe that's why you have all of this attrition yeah. because you might have some very successful time and then you think what and you really and, and i've done it myself you know especially in moving where i lose yeah. that momentum and and i don't have that consistency and then you have a downturn and so you have to say okay now i've got to get back up and i i know how to do it and I just have to, I know that if I keep at it, if I'm consistent, then there will be success in the end. But it is a lot of work and it is a lot of consistency. And I think this is a good time for one of the things that I've learned from one of my mentors. And, and, and I say to him, I, I find moments to say this myself over and over and over again, because it puts you in a good state when you're, when you feel this way is trading your expectations for appreciations so I don't expect these people to be, to be my client, to give me their listing. I would appreciate it. And because I would appreciate it, I'm now going to be consistent in the things that will help me earn and therefore appreciate, you know, their business. That's perfectly um, put. 
So, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Because and if also you, if learning you expect, not to take it, expect it, it, you get lazy. If you expect it, you get lazy and complacent. Sure. Um, if you appreciate no, yeah. it, you do the work and you stay consistent. I complacency is the worst thing as I think any entrepreneur. Complacency is the worst thing you can do. Yeah. Uh, you, you have to keep consistent. You have to keep growing too because things change so rapidly. So you have to keep on top of it. You have to keep educating yourself. Uh, yeah. Now, you know, there's, a bu- now, there's a bunch of things um, in your book or in your chapter. And then in this book with all the other agents, um, when you, if you were to think back to the beginning of your career or to, in those moments where you, you know, were trying to figure out how to get to the next level, knowing what you now know about the authors and the book and what this book's all about, why do you think agents should pick up the book, Becoming a Local Leader? Uh, I think, to, I think I'll keep coming back to this, is that it's wonderful to learn. It's sort of like having a little bit of a coaching and mentor uh, without uh, much cost, much, uh, much cost and mm-hmm. very little input. Um, I, what, absolutely learning from other people's trials and what has worked and hasn't worked uh, is one of the ways that I've grown and gotten to the place I, I, I am. So I think that that's important information for anybody that wants to be a realtor. But also uh, equally important is learning what does work and, um, and seeing yourself too. Because, you know, there, like I said, we are all different. There are things that are going to work for one person or or it might not necessarily work for another, but having a little bit of different perspectives, I think that anybody can find themselves or most people will be able to find themselves amongst that. Like, ah, well, this resonates with me. I'm going to try it, you know, or that doesn't look like it'll really work for me as well. Um, but it's that, you know, just really having it in one very in a succinct space to look at. Like this, these are the uh, years of experience that these people have had. These are the things that they wish they knew. Now, you know, I have them right here in front of me. And then this are the variety of things that they're trying that are working. Well, let me see what sounds good for me. You know, what resonates with my why, what, what really speaks to myself. Mm. I'm going to try it. I love it. <laughs> and I hope people do. And I know that once people uh, watch this and listen to you, um, they're probably going to want to reach out. I, they might have heard that you know you're hoping to give back and contribute and help bring people up in their careers. So if people want to get in contact with you to learn from you to build a relationship with you, how can they do so? They can reach me through my email address, which is Miri uh, M I R I middle initial S is in Sam dot Wilkins at e v real estate dot com, and that's E as an elephant, V as in Victor. Uh, and just if they put in the subject line mentorship, I will definitely open it and I uh, would love to communicate with anybody that has questions or wants to reach out regarding real estate. Definitely leverage it. Mentorship is sought, not taught. So if you're listening, you got to seek out the advice and the wisdom and save yourself a bunch of pain and grief from people who have been there, done that. Um, I want to thank you for being a part of this project um, and being a part of today's uh, interview um, and all the information that you shared. Two really good points. Get a mentor um, and and be yourself. Trust yourself, yeah, trust yourself. And, and potentially get a mentor to help you figure out what is the strategy that aligns with your personality, your values. There's lots more in the book. So definitely pick up Becoming a Local Leader. There's 21 amazing stories in there and so many different strategies and tactics and ways of thinking about the business and ways of thinking about being a business owner um, that if you're trying to grow your real estate business, um, this book will be a very important, um, very useful for you. And if you want to check out the other interviews of the other authors, subscribe to the YouTube show um, or the podcast and uh, listen and learn because these people have figured it out. So thank you, Mary, uh, for being on today's show. Thank you so much, Grant. I'm really excited to be a part of this project. Awesome. All right. Become a local leader, everyone. It's a ton of fun and it pays. Uh, Until next time, take care.